hasn't changed really much in 30 years. I mean, if you had a heartbeat as regular as the cardiogram tracking the annual fluctuations in sea ice over the last 30 years, you would be regarded as a very healthy little planet. <laughs> and so there's Greenland, about which Al Gore has far too much to say. He says it's all disappearing and the ice is melting. So I checked with one of the scientists from Denmark, which owns Greenland, who monitors the ice by using satellites to make extra ice on Greenland over that period. And when I used this slide a couple of years ago in a talk in Minnesota, there was a professor of raffia work who, who saw this. And, and he, said, he said, oh no, he said, but you haven't read the subsequent paper by Johannes. Well, no, I hadn't, because it was published the same year that I gave the talk but slightly after the date on which I gave it. So, of course, I couldn't take account of it in my... But this is how dopey these people are. They long to pick holes if they can. And that paper said 273 billion tonnes of ice has gone since I, my last paper from the top of Greenland into the ocean. And I thought, that's odd. Previously, we were talking of centimetres of thickness. Now, suddenly, we're talking of billions of tons of ice. Why the change in units? When a scientist is changing his units, he might be hiding something. <laughs> and what do we do? We convert the units back to the unit he originally used, which was thickness of ice. And we found that that 273 billion tons amounted to approximately six inches of the two feet that had previously accumulated, leaving 18 inches of it still there. And so even if that six inches had in fact been a net addition to the amount of water in the ocean, how much would sea level have risen compared with 2003? Would anyone like to give me a figure? <laughs> Almost zero is the correct answer. The answer is 0.7 millimetres. Merit star over there. <laughs> and here is another way that I checked this. I was so startled when I first saw your Hedison's paper sent to me uh, by a scientist. Um, then I checked it. I got in touch with the Department of Defence and I said, send me photographs of your early warning stations for those big, bad Russian ICBMs which you had parked all along the northern scarp of Greenland on the ice. So on the left, two stations, as they were when they were in operation in the 60s. And on the right, the same two stations, much more recently, surrounded by a large amount of white stuff, and I don't think it was Al Gore's dandruff. <laughs> I think it was probably snow and fir and ice. That's what I think it was. And so there is uh, one of the reasons why, if people say, oh, but you can't listen to that guy, Moncton. He's just a layman. He doesn't know any climate science. No, but I am a policymaker, and I know you should check stuff. And all I had to use to check this one was that useful and generally available instrument, the Mark I eyeball. <laughs> Are they still in use? So then, Gore says, says, oh, he says, it's terrible. It's absolutely terrible. He says, all the glaciers are melting worldwide. The mountain glaciers are melting. And one billion people depend on the water from these mountain glaciers. And if it all melts, then a billion people won't have any water. Well, of course they don't depend on the ice melt from the glaciers. They depend on the snow melt which goes on top of the glaciers and covers much more of them. In fact, it covers very nearly half the northern hemisphere every winter. That's what they depend on for their water supply. And that, as this figure from the Rutgers University uh, Snow and Ice Lab, that's just inside the building where that large CO2 tank was, um, that you saw earlier. There's no trend in any of the five winter months in snow cover throughout the, the last 40 years. There's been no decline, and in fact, in the winter of 2009 to 10, there was a record amount of snow cover, not a record low, a record high. Because of global warming, of course. <laughs> so then we go on to hurricanes, which I said I would come back to, and all you need to see here is this is the record over the last 30 years of the combined frequency, intensity, and duration of all the tropical cyclones, hurricanes, and typhoons all around the center of the, of the world over the last 30 years, combined into a 12-month running summer, 24-month running summer, I should say, by my friend Professor Ryan, Dr. Ryan Maui at Florida State University.
And as you will see on the right there, it's looking rather low, and it is indeed at just about its lowest level of hurricane activity since records began by satellite 30 years ago, and it may well be the lowest, in fact, in 50 years. So once again, this is what the data actually show, but this is not what you're being told by the APC. So then we have your own Great Barrier Reef, and you've all heard the Great Barrier Reef is disintegrating and collapsing and dying, and it's all our fault. Well, no, it isn't. At least, even if it were, it certainly isn't because of any warming of the ocean surrounding the reef. Because here is your own Barrier Reef Authority's record of the temperature that is observed in the seawater around the Great Barrier Reef over the last 20 or 30 years, and what you see is pretty much no trend at all. And once again, all I do here is, when, they, when, when you listen to these people at the Boundary Reef Authority say, can I have another grant? It's all terrible. Can I have another grant? I'll make it all go away if you only give me another grant. <laughs> I stop and I say to myself, all I need to do is check the data. And there's the data, and it's their own data. And it does not show, I put it to you, a warming sufficient to cause any damage whatsoever to the corals on the reef, some of which have been there for 550 years million years. During nine-tenths of which period, uh, the seawater would probably have been seven or eight Celsius warmer than it is today. And there are just a few of the errors in Gore's movie, summarised by the judge. Once again, I shall be testing you on them later. So, Al Baby, I have been trying to debate you throughout the last four or five years. I sent a written challenge to your home in Tennessee, which consumes massively, about 20 times as much electricity as the average house. Your carbon footprint is very satisfactory, I will grant you that. But I have not yet had a reply to my challenge to you, Al Baby, to come and debate this issue of the climate on international television in any format and location that you may choose. But Al, I'm going to say this. I'm coming after you. You cannot hide. I'm going to get you. <laughs> Check. What you have been told is the great IPCC consensus, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the body whose job it is to get the science right. And I'm going to look successively at three of their reports. And I'm going to take one key central conclusion from each of those three reports. And I'm going to report to you on how they reached that conclusion and leave it to you to decide whether the conclusion is legitimate or bogus. And we start then with the 1995 Second Assessment Report, a big thousand-page document produced by a thousand scientists. And they concluded, after looking at the evidence, when will an anthropogenic and man-made effect on uh, climate change be identified? It's not surprising that the best answer to this question is, we do not no, they were being honest. But you may be a little puzzled. You might not remember seeing that published anywhere in the ABC. So, and here's why not. It actually isn't the fault of the ABC. It is, in fact, the fault of the IPCC. This is going to be good. Um, and the reason why is that this... Uh, and five or four other statements like it were cut out from the scientist's final draft after it had been submitted, cut out by one scientist brought in by the IPCC bureaucracy because they said to themselves, hey, how can we go on travelling to Bali and other fancy places like this every few months for a, a, an earnest conference on the climate if there isn't any problem with the climate? One or two countries are kind of going, that guy Moncton, he'll give us a terrible time. So what they do instead is they rewrite the scientist's report, getting one scientist to do it. So here, we don't know whether there's any, whether we're ever going to know whether there's a human effect on the climate. That's what the science said. Here is what they published. The body of evidence now points to a discernible human influence on global climate. No, it doesn't. No, it didn't. 
They simply changed it because they wanted one man's opinion 